So, hello and welcome. I almost said herzlich willkommen. I'm used to doing these interviews in German. You would be fine with that. Yeah, can I say herzlich willkommen? Danke. <laughs> yeah, Laura speaks um, German, so we, but today we're doing the interview in English because that's the, that's the most that's the, that's the language that we do our coaching in. And uh, today I'm I'm speaking with Laura. Laura is a client of mine, and um, I'm Shelly, by the way. For those of you who are seeing this video for the first time, um, I teach coaches, trainers, consultants, and other um, heart-driven entrepreneurs uh, to position themselves in the marketplace um, to get more clients and to bring their business online. And today, um, Laura and I are going to be talking about the getting the getting clients part. And Laura, I thought that we could just start out by then you introducing yourself, like tell the people who are listening um, who you are, where you live, what you do in your business. Well, okay, Shalia. So I'm Laura Matsukis. I'm the fa founder of LNK Training, and I live in Grenoble in the French Alps. I help entrepreneurs and CEOs of small businesses with their finances. So worldwide, I do online training, online coaching in finance. And I really want to take the fear out of finance for them, to help them make better decisions and to grow their business on a healthy foundation. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay cool. cool. Oh, now there's an echo in there. Da, da, da. Can you hear that? Look? No, I, I'm good. I don't hear okay. any echo. So. Okay, we'll keep an we'll keep a watch out for that. So, Laura, I what we wanted to talk about today because you and I had a conversation uh, last week, and we talked about the fact that we've been working together for a while. Um, I don't. Do you know how many months it's been? Right actually? Yeah, actually, we began last year. Has it been a year? Yeah. That that is so crazy. And we were talking about last week. You held a webinar. And you were like, yeah, 25 people showed up. And I guess you have, what did you have, like 60 participants who register? Not everybody always comes. But 25 people showed up, and you were like, you, I got five, I get acquainted calls. You had two clients um, from that, and then another, you know, two more uh, GAC. Did you go ahead and get four? Yeah. Two more signed up last yeah. week after we talked? Yeah. Okay, congratulations. <laughs> and we were talking together, and you were like, yeah, it felt really comfortable and I felt really easy going about talking about what I do on the webinar I found my voice all these people signed up and you got all these clients from this yes. and we were you and I were kind of celebrating this um, on the one hand like doing our like little <laughs> ce virtual celebration dance <laughs> but and but at the same time we were, we were looking back because it wasn't always that way for you um, right no, it wasn't. <clears throat> Exactly. That getting clients was just so so effortless that it that it feels like it is now. In fact, when you came to me a year ago, as we just you know found out, you didn't have any clients at all. And I talked with you today. We had like a pre-discussion before this interview, and we both kind of said, like I I was in that place in my business where I had an awesome website. Um, I had webinars that I was holding or or blog articles that I was writing, maybe even videos and. To the outside world, it appeared that I was successful, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't have any clients. Yeah. And it, it took me a while to really figure out how to get them. And I remember when you and I first met, you were in a similar situation. So maybe, like, tell me where where you were at the beginning when we when we first started working together. Well, um, I was. Teaching a lot. I was a finance professor, which I'm, I still am in, in the U.S. But I really wanted to to create a business to help entrepreneurs, to help CEOs of small businesses, because they are lost with the company. So it was really a goal to help them. But um, I didn't actually know how to do it. So I was this expert. Um, expert, I mean, an on, even an online expert, I had a very big Twitter account, a very big blog, uh, lots of, um, like, I mean, how you how you call that? When like followers, followers, people, yeah, people yeah. Uh, that sign up for my newsletters and emails saying that what I did is, is great. I mean, my article, my blog article, stuff like that. So I, I, went to, I was this expert and since I... I I was also a professor in the U.S. I was recognized as an expert, but yeah. I had no clients. Yeah. And um, well, I didn't even know how to meet my clients, so I was kind of lost in translation. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. between my um, my my expertise and my envy to help entrepreneurs and uh, CEOs of CEOs of small businesses. You know, and yeah. I felt a bit like a failure. I mean, I felt like I have this 15 years of experience in the finance sector, I have a PhD in finance, I have an MSc in finance, I, I am a professor in the US and I cannot find any clients. So I felt like a failure. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. I remember that when you yeah. came to me, and um, and it was so interesting too because you know um, when I was whenever someone signs up for a get acquainted call, and you'd been recommended me to me through a, a yeah. common friend of ours, and uh, you know I looked online, and your website just looked so professional, so perfect, like you were doing so many of the right things. And, and I remember when we first started talking, and you were kind of saying like, yeah, there's just like this one um, French bank who gets you know more followers than me. Yeah. <laughs> around the subject of finance and I was like wow so you know that, that that's kind of crazy because on, on the surface it looked like you were doing all the right things and and I remember too when we first started working out you were you were in a circle of kind of entrepreneurs and some of them were really they had really taken off in their their business they were they had tons of clients they were making lots of income and you were kind of like so you know what why not me what 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 is the missing link that that's happening here yeah I was actually not thinking <laughs> like, because <laughs> I was comparing myself to entrepreneurs who had created the, the, the business like three or four years before and I yeah. just started focusing on my business because um, I had um, created my business I had my website but I didn't really work on it which is a big difference so I just uh, wrote my blog and I had my Twitter account and my Facebook account, but that was it. I was teaching 90% of the time. I was uh, with my students 90% of the time, and I had no time to put in my business. But I still wanted to have my clients. So yeah. I was, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I was uh, with all those entrepreneurs who have been working for years on their business, who were successful, and I couldn't see why I was not. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So today, what we wanted to do is, you and I talked about this before we got on on the call today. We said, you know, there are probably so many people out there right now, this minute, who are in exactly the same that same space that I was in, that you were in, just like feeling like, what what is what is wrong? And and we and now you you did it. Yeah. You you did it. You have 15, you know, long term clients yeah. on board because you know part of part of the work we did together was really building solid packages yeah. where people work with you long term and you've got you, you've got a full practice. I mean, I, you had, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I right? got a full practice. That is true. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about recently, like, okay, so now we got to do some time management stuff. We got to look at, like, you know, how you're, you're filled up working with your clients. Yeah, and I even hired an assistant to help me because I couldn't do it by myself anymore. Yeah, I'm filled up. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk about that. So let's talk about some things that happen. I mean, obviously, in a year's time, a lot of stuff happened. And we had a lot of we had a lot of calls. We met every every two yeah. weeks together, and we, we we did a lot of work. You did a lot of things on the way there. So we're not going to be able to cover everything, but let's try to look at some three or four main kind of turning points and things that happened on the way that might help the people who are listening just a little bit to kind of recognize maybe what. What could be going on with them? I mean, maybe they have some parallels to to your story. So, what do you think was one of the first turning points that happened for you? Well, first of all, I worked a lot on my company. It doesn't come overnight. See, we have a special guest here. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't come overnight. So, yeah. um, I finally decided that I wanted really. It was in my mind. I wanted to grow this business. It was not a side business. So I had to 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 cut back my professor my my classes because you yeah. cannot do something only ten percent of your time. You cannot grow business ten percent of the of your time. So right. now I'm ten percent of my time a professor and ninety percent of my time an entrepreneur. And it changes yep. things a lot. So I decided right. I want to do that and I want to put everything in. I you know I really decided to work on my company. So I cleared my schedule and I worked on my company, which this first big turning point, I think. Yeah. And I also got the pressure, you know, since now uh, I had to cut back my hours as a professor financially, of course, I had more yeah. pressure. 
So I had to make more. I had to do more every day for my business. So that was, I think, the first turning point. And the second turning point is when um, you told me, well, you have to go and meet your clients. So yeah. I do online coaching, online training, and I actually like to be behind my computer, <laughs> but it's not enough. So you have to go yeah. out there. And I think I remember last year you told me, you will have to go out there. Put yourself out there. So networking events, um, co give conferences because it was my, my how do you call that unique volume. So how do you I don't yeah. So you know I'm good at conferences. So give go out there and give conferences. Network. Go out. Yeah, exactly. I had, exactly. I had to do that. <laughs> yeah, you did. So let's look at those two that, those two things. So the first thing you said is like you know committing more. Yeah time to your business but i i think it's not i think it's about time but it's also about what you just said it's it's making the commitment yes. um i'm really going to do this i'm 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 full in yeah. um because because i remember i remember a point in my business where i was just playing you know it was just like you can wish I'm gonna, for success it doesn't yeah, yeah. You wish for it. You want it to happen. You're waiting for the magic fairy to sh show up and, and things like that. I mean, you're doing stuff, but you know, you're what you're still waiting for the magic fairy to show up. And and I remember I remember this time point, and I, I can remember the moment exactly. I was in um, I was in I think it was London, and Bernadette Doyle was holding an event, and I went there, and it was about getting clients. And I remember. During that event, something clicked inside of me where I, I really internally shifted. I, I shifted like I'm not playing anymore. I'm, I'm doing this. This is my business and I'm committed to this. So that's what I hear you saying yeah. when when you went forward. It was like, because I remember this time period when we were talking, you were kind of doubting like, is it really the thing I want to do to have my business or should I continue yeah. with the professorship? Great road in front of me as a professor yeah. with all these yeah. proposition for classes and stuff like that. So I was like, why do, why exactly do I put myself through this if yeah. I can uh, financially be comfortable as a professor well yeah. because I really wanted to do it because I really wanted to make yeah. a living out of my business to be the one who decides when to pick up my kids uh, to be the one to decide who I'm working with so yeah. only yeah. my ideal clients only people I like to work with I like to share with and stuff like that so it was I was really right I was committed so yeah. Yeah. finally in January last year I was committed, committed yep. to make a living out of this business for me, yep. for my kids, because it, it, it was also a way to be with my kids yep. Um, yep. and with my husband. So it was really important. So commit, yeah, committed is the key word. Yeah. It's so not what we could, it's no. No, it's not a it's not a hobby. It's not an alternative. It's not something to dip the dawdle in or play in. So, it's like a commitment. And so, I guess what we could say to everyone listening is like, check inside yourself. Yeah. Take a moment and ask yourself, what is my level of commitment on a scale of zero to one hundred percent? And if if you're not, if you haven't reached that point of a hundred percent commitment, which for everybody it's different how you get there. Then that could be an, if you're if you're anything below a hundred, you know that could be an indicator why things in your business exactly. aren't working, why why you're not getting the clients. Exactly. I mean, I wasn't committed before, so why would anyone sign up with me? I wasn't I wasn't committed. I just did some work here and there, you know, for yeah. a couple of friends and clients, but that's it. But why more? I was not committed. Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. think um, at some point I was even thinking. I don't have time for my clients, so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I remember we had yeah. that conversation, <laughs> and that was, we were like, okay, so we got to work on work on that. Yeah. So, so that was number one. And then the second thing you, that you said, Laura, was, you said, Shelley told me to get out from behind my yeah. desk. So, so, so let's talk about that because I, I think this is a space that we really, I really want to be real. And and because what what I see happening out there in the world, especially in the online world, is that. Um, some people are able to completely 100% work online, yeah. to market online, 
and to, and to sell online, and they can live completely um, online without ever moving out from behind their computer. Exactly. And, and <laughs> it didn't it didn't work for you. And and the, and in fact, there's a small portion of people that it works for, and a very large portion of people who it doesn't work for, especially especially in the beginning. And it's sort of like if you had to look at the ice that iceberg model, right? It's just that little top of, of, of the iceberg that you know those people can just do on the online and get their, their business that way. For the rest of us, and me included, even though I call myself the virtual coach, it was when when you when I said, Okay, I'm leaving my computer, I'm gonna go where my clients are in the real world. You mentioned networking events. You mentioned speaking in front of people and 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 just having real life conversations. And what, something that you're really you're really good at is like one on one conversations. That's how, that that's why a lot of the strategy that we built for you this year, especially towards summer, was realizing you're good at reaching out into individuals and having those one on one conversations. So, would you tell our the people who are listening like what? What shifted, what started to change when you started going out into the world um, and meeting your ideal clients, and, and, and why wasn't it hard as, as you expected it to be? Well, it was hard at the beginning, so <laughs> we, are, we are honest here. Yeah. So I started with big, big networking events, and I felt yeah. overwhelmed. It was not for me, to be honest. So yeah. we decided that it's okay. <laughs> And uh, we decided for small gatherings and for one-on-one -on -one interviews. And that's where I really um, think I found my voice because I listened to my clients. I listened to what they, uh, my, my, my perspective, my ideal clients. I listened to what they had to say with their own words, not with my finance expert words, you know, yeah. what I thought would be best for them. I listened to what they want it, what they yes. thought would be best for them. I listen to their fears. I listen to, you know, what they need. Yeah. And um, it was eye-opening, I, I, I have to say. Like, okay, I do not use um, the right words. I do not approach them the right way. I did not really understand their fears because I'm, I'm an expert in, in finance, so I don't have the same fears. You know? Yeah. And they do. It's it's difficult for them to talk about finance. It's difficult for them to 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 think as a CEO when they are entrepreneurs. And um, I understand that. And my job is to make it possible for them, yeah. you know, to 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 read their numbers, to listen to their numbers without anxiety, without anything. And um, that's when I realized it. So really going and see my client going out. From behind my computer, um, well, I found my voice, you know, and my voice yeah. was actually what they need. Yeah, so exactly. I discovered really their fears and their needs and how I can talk to them. Exactly, and you know the the way the way that that happened because you know the, they the people who are listening they didn't they didn't yeah, follow us along and, and, and it's, no it's, it's okay I'm gonna I'm just get, I, yeah it's okay I'm just gonna give them some background information because you kind of you were working for a while with CEOs who are making you know quite a bit of already income in their business and you started to have this feeling like you wanted to look and see like work, what would it be like working with entrepreneurs who are just you know maybe about yeah. a, about a, at a hundred thousand. Um, earning income around that area, and you start, and you didn't know, you didn't know, so what they needed, so you you, you decided to hold interviews with them. We talked about right. doing that, right? I recommended that yeah. to you. Yeah. Actually, what happened is after big networking events where I felt overwhelmed, I still signed clients. I don't know if you yeah. remember. I, I went to the I do remember and clients. stuff like that. So I yeah. was okay because I signed clients right after those events. So that's. First one, that's good. But when I went to see those clients, I saw that it was nearly too late. I mean, I wanted to educate, but it's not educate, it's not maybe the right, but coach them before it's too late, you know, to help them yeah. from the beginning. Um, and that's when I talked um, with you about it. And I said, look, I wanted to, I want to work before to lay the, the, the a healthy financial ground for every entrepreneur so they don't have to call me when it's nearly too late you know and when they are in crisis and I don't want to really work with people in crisis I want to work with people who 
who have everything to grow their company, they just need some expertise. Yep. So um, my second step was, okay, maybe I should work with entrepreneurs who already found their clients, who already, yep. already found their voices. And then at that point, you know, 100,000 uh, euro revenue, where now they need to go further and think a bit more strategic and think a bit more um, financially. <laughs> Yep. And that's that's when I come in. So we can yep. do it before before something comes up and it's too late. Yeah. Yep. And that's when I did my one on one interviews um, after you told me to do it. <laughs> and um, actually all my one on one interviews ended up my clients. I know this is crazy. Like uh, the, I talk about this all the time with people. They don't, you know, it's with my clients. When I recommend this to them, the first time I say, almost every single one of my clients who do these interviews get a lot of clients out of yeah. the interviews themselves. I mean, it's crazy, and it's just because you're 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 listening, you're connecting, you're finding out, and and what and what you're saying is so powerful about like understanding where their pain is, understanding where their fear is, because what then what you did is basically you created new offers with them, yeah. with them together and that, that that feels way less intimidating than going off and in, in, in somewhere in a, in a room by yourself and creating exactly. offers that you don't you, you have no idea that if someone wants them or not so what I hear you saying for the people who are listening out there to be, get really clear it's about creating offers that your market really needs yeah. and wants and getting out from behind your computer and going and surrounding yourself with those people, talking to them in person, will give you the information that will help you to do that. Exactly. And right? that's how I created my package for entrepreneurs. And yep. it sells very well now. Exactly. And one thing that happened for you along the way, Laura, I remember very, very exactly, is that you, you had so much in your packages, right? Like you were just giving things like way advanced over yep. here. And what you realized in, in talking with them is they just need this really small foundational piece, and that's going to get them started, yeah. right? And that's so, that. we'll go from yeah. there. <laughs> well, like, right. So if if you do a if you do an, a phenomenal job, which I know you will with those clients on that foundational basis, they'll go to the next level with you, right. the next level to you, and out of that will come, you know, long term, long years working with your clients, which is which is what we want because that that's that's not only extremely fulfilling it's not only ex um, extremely substantial for our clients to to get that stability over time with us but it's also um, smart to do from um, from a business perspective and which is actually what is already happening um, I, I wanted to give everything at once and yeah. it was I'm sure they were overwhelmed by my packages and I just broke it down you know, yep. you need that now. Maybe you need something else after. And uh, yeah, it's so much better. <laughs> so much better. Yeah. Yeah, we, we tend to we tend to overgive, and I remember I had that in the beginning of my business, my very first online course, which is the first thing that I really sold, um, you know, in the marketplace. It had so much information. When the people were done with the six weeks boot camp online, they would re feedback me. I need. Um, I'm good, Shelia. I'm going to take about another two years to go go back and and read yeah. this content. Like, and so no one booked coaching with me after that because I gave I gave also too much. You know, it, it's that perspective. So let let's talk about the next milestone. And and uh, like I don't know what you're going to say. I have no yeah. idea what you're going to say. <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> yeah. So so and I want to definitely before we finish the interview, Laura, talk about also the mindset piece. Yeah. But but maybe there's something else in there, like a practical milestone. I don't know. What do you think was the next milestone for you moving forward in your getting to those clients that full practice? Well, now that I have this full practice, I need to make it a scalable business, you know, because I'm kind of by myself uh, coaching all those entrepreneurs and CEOs. So I have to make it work. I have to find a way to make it work and to be able to help even more entrepreneurs and <laughs> CEOs. So this is yeah. something that we have to talk about together. <laughs> yeah, okay, no worries, we'll um, do that. <laughs> and, um, that's why I am today. So I'm not. it's not about having um, one, two clients anymore. It's about how can I have um, more than a full practice. <laughs> exactly. How can I and on... 
And on that and on that way to where you are now, Laura, I remember I remember like one deciding moment and we talked I think we talked about it last week and it was about the snow globe. Oh, yeah. Can you remember oh, that? Yeah. So um <laughs> I think it was in May. <laughs> um I had doubts, I have to say it, you know. Do I still it comes up regularly. Do I really wanna do yeah. that? Uh, do I really want to put myself through that? It's difficult to go out there and always to talk and always to put yourself out there, you know. Um, and um, I was thinking and thinking and thinking. And you t told me, look, just stop thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you had the snowball and you said, stop, stop shaking the snowball so you can have some clarity. Just mm -hmm. cut yourself some slack. So you gave me the permission to settle down to say it's okay, just do nothing for one week, which never happened. <laughs> I did nothing. I had a wonderful weekend with all my friends, and I went, came back, and I said, okay, I will take the time I need to find out if it's something I want to do. I will uh, go back. I will go back and talk to my clients. I will go back and talk to my prospects. I will uh, give more. It's okay. I will take yeah. the time I need. And I actually yeah. didn't need so much time, but I needed to yeah. settle down and to cut myself some slack. Yeah. So mindset is extremely important. Yeah. And uh, it's true that at some point we have to stop, stop um, think overthinking and just yeah. doing. Just I just yeah. had to do it. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like we get all these thoughts in our heads and for everybody it's it's it, we think it's different but it's not. Every, everyone's thinking the same thing, you know? It's like um these thoughts of um this isn't working. I'm not good enough. Yeah, do I want to do this? Like what do I give my clients? You know, I was second guessing everything. Exactly. Second guessing yourself, feeling like a fraud, like all all of these things. And these thoughts are just coming. They're just coming. And um, the analogy that we used is like, you know, those snow, those snow globes yeah. where you have like the scenery in it and all that snow on the bottom. And you start shaking the snow globe and all those, all those snows start to show up and suddenly you can't see clearly the scenery. And the idea being is just like we're, we're, we're taking those thoughts that are coming into our head and we're, we're, we're engaging with them, that we're, we're putting too much emphasis on them being there. We're thinking they're real, that they mean something. And um, in doing so, we're just turning and churning in all this thought storm. And the thought storm looks very much like the snow globes, you know, so it's like shaking the snow globe. And so in the conversation we had was take the snow globe, put it down yeah, on <laughs> you know, where is your snow globe? <laughs> yeah, putting it down and letting it settle and realizing that in just letting the thinking come and go, you know, you, you can suddenly have clarity because it all just kind of settles down to the bottom. And what we talked about last week, Laura, on our conversation was also this idea of, you know, when we're too busy with ourselves and our own thoughts and our ego, and we're not, we're not, yeah, when we're, when, when we're busy with ourselves and not with our clients, exactly. Then, then we feel miserable. So it's like getting away from your thoughts and going out and doing those interviews was just like turning it around 180 degrees yeah. and saying like, stop, stop talking to myself and go out there and talk with potential clients. Yeah, right? exactly. It was, it was a, a turning point too. You're right. It was a turning point from it's this business is actually not about me. It's about my clients and how I can help them. And that happened once I let myself just be. You know, yeah. and um, just go out there and talk with people, not in a selling perspective, but just in yeah. an exchange perspective, which is a big difference, big, big, yeah. big difference. And once I did that, you know, once I really um, decided that it was all about helping my clients, everything changed. Of yeah. course, it changed when you think about it. <laughs> of course. But you have to go through it. It's a it's a process. I think what's important to yeah. say too, it's a step by step thing. You cannot burn the steps. You cannot go from the first step to the last step. It's impossible. You have to go through all the steps. Yeah. And you have to at some point. I'm sorry, but you will feel down. But it's okay because the next step is a breakthrough. 
Exactly. And I, I love that you, I love that you said that about the process. And, um, and that's what I want to say at this moment. If you're going through all these things that we talked about, you're not a bad person. You're not, you're not, <laughs> not stupid. A <laughs> you're not a failure. This is, this is like, I, I like to call it the entrepreneurial rite of passage. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's, it's things that we go through just like every teenager gets, you know, zits and uh, awkwardness and hair in places they don't want and they go get all weird and then they, then they become an adult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's sort of, it's sort of like this puberty that we have as well in, in this entrepreneurial phase and you go through it to grow and it's, it's uncomfortable and there, there'll be the next level of uncomfort moving forward as well. But that's okay. There's, there's just like nothing wrong with you. <laughs> You're good. You're and, gonna, and it's even something that you need to go through, I think. Yeah, you do, and it brings you so much. You stay focused on yourself, and then at some point, your clients are going to make you pay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or you're just not going to have any. You know, just yeah. that's that's the thing. One last thing I'd like to ask you, Laura, because so so many people out there have heard that they can get clients with webinars. Yeah. And you've really, you've really mastered it. I mean, you got you got clients off your first webinar. You've got like these new four clients yeah. off of the second webinar. It, you know, you're doing that really, really well. And you and I talked about in the beginning, before we got on, on the call today a little bit about what it means to have sort of like also processes in place because some people people think you get on a webinar and you jump clients, but we, we did some work on that. what happens when a client is even interested in working with you and what happens from there and how do you move them forward into a, a, a client relationship. And so maybe you could talk about your experience in, in the webinar and also how having the processes kind of in place in the background were really helpful for you to get in clients on board from those events that you held. So I think in general, you need processes, you need um, a way to get your clients on board. So we put in place a GAC call, a get a contact yeah. call, and um, it's impossible to go and get a client without a process. That's what I think. Okay, I'm very... You know, why? I'm, why? I, why I'm is it? Why is it? Person. Because if you just give them content and you leave them there, you know... Like, right, so you give them content in the yeah, webinar. And then and you then say, you... okay, well, yeah. maybe first they think they can do it by themselves. Yeah. Okay. And they, there's a disconnection. I mean, uh, I wanted them to really had access to me. So after the webinar, we had a 15 minutes exchange where they could ask all the questions they wanted to ask. And I think that's really an important part of the webinar. Webinar is not uh, only about content or what I can say, it's about what they have to say and about their questions. So I think this exchange is very important. Yeah. You know, that they feel like I can, um, I, I am there for, for them. And yeah. even to go further, um, you asked me to put a call to action after the webinar. So they don't, um, you know, just step back after the webinar and say, oh, it was a great webinar. Now and, what? And now <laughs> what? I told them, yeah. if you need help with everything I talked about during the webinar, I'm here for you. Yeah. And we can talk about it during half an hour. We can take your company and talk about it, about your specific issues. Right. Because if you don't do that, I mean, it's just a webinar. It's just a conference. It's nothing else but a conference. So they will think about me maybe at some point, maybe in six months, maybe in one year, maybe never again. I don't know. Right. But um, with this exchange and with this call to action, they come and see me right away. And yeah. um, to be honest, they even... Um, made, made an appointment during the webinar. Yeah. Okay, so I yeah. had the last webinar, I had 25 people show up and five people made an appointment during the webinar. The webinar was right. not finished. I sent it out a link to my, to my, my agenda yeah. and um, they made an appointment during the webinar because that's when right away. they are really in the action. That, that's when they want to do something. After, yeah. they do something else and they forget about it. Right. And I, and right. I do finance, so it's not something everybody wants to do every day. <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding? Are you kidding yeah. me? <laughs> so, and they were really, you know, after one hour, um, they were ready to jump. Yeah, right. So what I hear you saying, I'm going to summarize it for everybody that's listening. 
you you came into the webinar. You did give them great content. Yeah. You did provide value. Yeah. You did give. You did show them. You did talk about your steps of your system and how you work. Yeah. But then you you created a space and time to interact with them. It's, it goes it goes back to listening to what they're dealing with, what they want to talk about, what questions they That's have. The same thing for me too. I mean. Precious, precious. It's awesome. It's exactly like having one-to-one -one interviews. You're, you're still listening to your clients and giving them, them a, um, a space to, to express what they want to talk about. But then you're not leaving them hanging. You're, they're waiting for what's the next step. How can we deepen this conversation? How can, how can we get help from you? And you are right away saying, all right, here's the call to action, which is sign up for my Get Acquainted call. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about your business, and they have some, they have something that they can do right away. And I, I remember you and I while we were planning the webinar, we were kind of we were kind of talking about um, how do you how do you make that transition? How do you um, how do you put it in such a way that you feel comfortable with with speaking out that invitation for them to come? What what did you you come up with with me when we were talking about that, Laura? What did we say? Well, um, it it was really we decided to be completely honest with them. Remember, we said because that's yeah. the, actually that's the only way I think yeah. completely honest with your clients. And uh, I said, um, well, I want to now now that I have full practice, you know it. I really want to work only with my ideal client so yeah, it was yeah. important for me to have people on board that are really ready for my programs and that are re really ready to uh, work with me because I am their partners for I mean their business partners of course yeah. for three months I will really invest myself in their business yeah. Yeah. for them so I need to be on the same page you know yes. and I need to feel comfortable because I am completely in their business for three or four months. Yeah. So we, I just told them that. I just told them I'm at my best if I feel comfortable and I feel you're ready and I feel in phase with you and your business. Uh, so we need to talk about it. We yeah. need to get acquainted. <laughs> yeah. We need to meet um, so we can see if we can work together. So it's for you, but it's also for me which yeah. was completely true and it came really in the conversation after my webinar and I said look you're interested in that well that's great well now we, ha we have to discuss if we are a match and yeah. um, if I can help you, you know? yes I yes can, because, because I don't want to sell something and see that I'm not in you know I don't feel comfortable and I don't get right. what I should give right Right. So really, you know, the conclusion that you came to for yourself was um, be in integrity, be in honesty, uh, just, you know, s say it like it is. It does Say what you have to say. It doesn't have to be uh, salesy. It doesn't have to, you don't have to convince them. And it, it's, it's never about getting clients, 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 just, you know, no, it, like. Actually, the webinar, I didn't have any goal for this webinar. Yeah. You know, I wanted to, to. To have a moment of exchange, that was it when I went to the webinar. Of course, we talked together about marketing and we talked together about the call to action, but it was not about that, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Um, it turned out very well, but, you know, I don't know yeah. if you remember, you said um, you have six, six, 60 people on board. Are you okay with that? And I said, sure. <laughs> I didn't even have an opinion on that. Yeah, sure. It's not about how many people. It's about the moment, you know, yeah. without stress and just exactly and just just showing up, you know, and being real. Yeah. And and I think I think that is what is really tremendously shifted in the last year of working with you. You know, it it, it went so much away from. I've got to get this number of clients and this no yeah. number of revenue. Like you're so not in that space. You're just like you're just out there to serve people, and you're just you're just out there to build your business yeah. in the best way that you can. And and you know you've just gotten so much more relaxed around it. And I, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I love that. It's it's um a mindset thing. It is. It is. It is. I'm relaxed. I don't think about my numbers. And to be honest, now they are here my numbers, but. They are not here because um, because I was focused on them. They are here because I don't know <laughs> because I have something that my clients like and I love uh, working with them. I guess, but um, it's not the same 
way of approaching things. It's a whole different it's a, energy. Yeah, it's a whole different energy. So, so we, like the message that I would like to send to the people who are listening now is, you know, put yourself in in a place of serving your your clients and a place of serving yourself. So, you know, what what do you what can you do to bring value to the marketplace? What can you do to grow your business? Like you're always looking at those two sides. You're in, you know, it's not like it's not like you're just completely 100% lacking your ego and only ever thinking about the clients. No, you've got a business to grow and its job is is to make money, but at the same time you're out there to serve. So, put yourself in a place of service and things will get so much easier for you, okay. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All so, right. All a right. Good way to, to put it. Good. So, thank you so much, Laura, for for giving us insight, for letting people like. What do they say? Like showing us behind, the, opening the kimono, so to speak. As <laughs> 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 I'm going to be honest, we did. <laughs> we did. We did. Is there anything else that you want to share or say um, to close to close the call today? To to give them a message out there, hit someone who's in that space. No, I think. Cut yourself some slack. It's <laughs> no, really, it's it, it, it's important to understand that it's okay, it's normal. Um, I I will also say something that maybe nobody wants to hear, but make a living out of your business is not something that you make in three months or six months. Yeah. It takes some time. Yeah. And you have to be committed and you have to be patient and you have to know it. So some way you have to find another way financially, but you can do it. It is possible. Yeah. It is yeah. a process, but it doesn't come overnight. And it's yeah. normal, and it's okay. And you can and, do it. And, and you can and do you it. you can do it. It's possible. I did it. You did it's it. Possible. Other clients are doing Other it. Did you it. can do it. Yeah. Very good. Cha-ching! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Laura. Ciao, I will yeah. talk to you on our next yeah. coaching. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.